Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys, one that is long overdue. Uh, this is the Benchmade Tagged Out. I keep wanting to call it the Tag It Out, but that's stupid. <laughs> Thanks so much uh, to the gentleman who uh, initially I thought he loaned it to me, he actually uh, gave me this knife. So this, this knife will be one that I end up uh, giving away. Uh, I think that was his intention. So thank you very much. That was really kind of you. This came from a viewer. Uh, he wanted me to give a shout out to his buddy at the Nerd Painter, I assume, on Instagram. So uh, check out that Instagram. Uh, thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is a Benchmade knife, so it is made in the United States. It, uh, as is the case with all Benchmades, is pretty expensive. And I've got some gripes about materials here, really just the handle material. But I noticed on Blade HQ that they have some of these pre-installed with like G10 or even titanium. And I, I mean, spoiler alert, that, that's really what I'm going to talk a lot about because I think the design is good. Uh, I don't, I, I love the blade material, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, but I, I really don't like injection mold plastic. And I feel like after five years and 3000 uploads on YouTube, you guys probably get that, right? So if you came here expecting me to complain about the scales, I'm gonna. Uh, if you don't like it either, I would check out Blade HQ's listings, which I'll have right down in the description, where they have pre-installed some flitanium skills that look really good and are, in my opinion, just better materials for the money, um, and they add a trivial amount of weight. So, that'll all be down below. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. I don't think this will be a long review, but you can look at the timestamp. I don't know what it is yet. The overall length, that surprised me. I really thought it was eight and a quarter. It's actually like eight and a sixteenth blade length is coming in. I'm going to call that three and a half, maybe 3.45. <laughs> trivial. Speaking of trivial, um, 3.35 inches of cutting edge. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see this is a pretty good size knife. I'm going to call this a full size knife. It's not quite the same size as the Rat 1. How about up against the Demco 8020.5? Definitely larger there. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco PM2? Mm, there we go. And last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out, which is the size comparison that absolutely makes the most sense. This knife is like a long clip point version of the Bug Out, which is really cool. And for a lot of people who weren't aware of this knife, that's going to be enough to get them intrigued, right? I feel like this kind of flew massively under the radar, or it was just kind of underwhelming, and I, I think I understand why, but... Yeah, this is a large, it's, it's just a longer bug out with a clip point blade. That's, that's really what it looks like to me. Um, how's the action on this knife? It, it's typical bench made, right? Um, this one, for some reason, is not wanting to release in, immediately, but I can easily whip it closed. I mean, the action's smooth enough there, right? I have a feeling that just taking this apart and adding some 10 weight to the washers and maybe the um, the rounded tang or the axis bar would correct that. My favorite thing about it is that it has this little opening slot, which doesn't look like it's roomy enough to, you know, use for a reverse flick, but that's not the case. It's very easy. I think I actually prefer this quite a bit to the studs on the bug out. Uh, I think that flipping the bug out with the studs is a little easier than doing the standard thumb flick here, but if you want to reverse flick the knife, this is definitely easier. And we can't ignore the fact that it's probably meant to just be wheeled out like a normal human being. It works, and it's running on washers, so the same benefit applies here. The idea is I think you're maximizing the cutting edge while minimizing the overall weight, which they absolutely accomplished. I think that it's a little overkill. We'll talk about that here in a second. But it, it, it works, right? Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's really, really thin. How about thickness up against the bug out? Now, my bug out has aftermarket scales on it, but these are the same thickness as the standard uh, scales. So the tagged out is a little bit thicker, right? So if you're really like, it has to be as thin, but it's really, it's up here, right? It's just the top of these are really like kind of wide. 
down, you know, at the spine, it's really about the same. I think overall, you're really going to have almost exactly the same experience in the pocket, except for the fact that this is just taller, right? So, I mean, if the bug out is already, let's say you're looking at the bug out and you're like, yeah, man, that's, I handled one and it's like really big. Obviously, this is going to be too big, right? Um, but if you've ever handled the bug out and thought, yeah, I could go a little bit more, then this might be your guy, right? Um, let's go ahead and um, weigh it. We'll uh, talk about that here real quick. And, you know, if it's one thing that just blows my mind that is always missing, it's the scale. There it is. It's right in plain sight. <laughs> the weight on the tagged out is coming in at, uh, wow, 2.08 ounces. Amazing. I, 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 ah. It's cool. It's really lightweight. Wow. You know, I, I just find, you know, and I know like sometimes even if you're, if you're camping or hiking or if you're military, right, you might be wanting to maximize the utility of everything that's on your person while minimizing the weight. That's really, really cool. The vast majority of people don't need to do that. So it's neat that we have something specialized, but not only will the vast majority of people not need to do that, the vast majority of people who will buy this will not need to do that, right? So <laughs> that's really cool. And I'm sure that it's select few groups of people will be able to really use this for that. Um, but everybody else will be like, look at the, you know, the utility to weight ratio. And then it's just them carrying it in sweatpants, not hiking or doing any special ops thing. You know, it's like, I got to I listen, I got it. I got a two and a half pound grappling hook on me. I'm going to need that. Got to minimize the weight of my knife. Understandable. If your occupation requires that you use a grappling hook and carry it on your person at all times, I would imagine you've got a lot of other stuff on your Batman utility belt that you're going to need to, you know, weigh out and make sure the ratios are good for, the knife included. Everybody else, nope, you're all sweatpants people, right, in this uh, this little picture that I'm painting. So let's keep that in mind, right, because I'm going to gripe about the, the handle material here. <laughs> Um, hardware check. Let's get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot, I put a T in there. It's, I forgot it's a T10. Benchman always, I put a totally useless uh, bit in there. Okay, so I don't even need to do this. The body screws, which there are like 67 of, um, are a T6. We have um, screws for the uh, stop pin, and then we have three body screws. I'm sorry, four body screws on each side because we have one for the cartridge liner, and then three for the bot. So that's you know typical Benchmade. It's the same kind of deal with the bug out. It's and you know honestly, even Hogue does it on the on the Ritter Hogue, right? It's annoying, but if you have a if you've got the right tools in the uh, a place to put your hardware, you should be okay, right? It's not a deal breaker. It's just like wow, that's a lot of T6 screws, right? A lot of T6 screws that can strip. Outside of that, it one thing that Benchmade does that is awesome is they use captive. Uh, they use like a D-shaped pivot barrel, so you just need a T10, and you'll be able to get that screw out of there. They no longer put you know 17 gallons of Loctite on every single screw. So it is way less likely now that you will strip anything. Uh, blade stock thickness. Let's go ahead and do that because I know that this guy is thin. Is it even thin? I bet it's about the same as the bug out. It's like 80, it's like 90 thousands or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I got one right. Yeah. 89 thousands. What's the bug out? It's 87. All right. So the tag that's is slightly thicker. Trivial. Okay, um, let's get into it here. Beautiful ergonomics, beautiful. This is such a comfortable thing to hold on to. It's, I mean, if your hands are larger, it's very accommodating. My hands aren't massive. I wear an XL glove, which in my experience means I have regular sized hands for a guy. And I always, you know, joke with other men who pride themselves on having to, uh, better get the XLs because a large, a large is too small for me. You say to some random guy at Home Depot who doesn't care who you are or what your mission is. Nah, guys, XL gloves, you got regular hands, guys. Sorry. 
<laughs> the guys who wear the 2XLs and the 3XLs, those guys have big hands. Everybody else, right? I mean, I'm not coming down on anybody who wears a larger media. I'm just saying, like, if you pride yourself on an XL glove, you're a silly goose. <laughs> You're a silly, silly goose. That's just a regular glove. But anyways, you've got hands like mine. Um, yeah, it's really nice. And, you know, here's here's the great thing. They didn't slap some big old crazy Mighty Ducks freaking goalie mask on this thing for a pocket clip. They just put the regular one of the best clips that's ever been the short Benchmade deep carry clip. Fantastic. Really nice ergonomics. As far as you know, texturing goes on this injection mold plastic. I'm sure there's a specific name for it. I just don't care because I hate this stuff. Um, it, the texturing is really nice. And honestly, the machining, everything is great, right? If you're under the impression that Benchmade has quality control issues, it hasn't been that way for a long time, right? If you remember Benchmade from like 2014, yeah, I agree. They used to have, you know, some boogers here and there. But here lately, as a, uh, you know, a knife reviewer who handles a lot of knives, including Benchmade knives, right? Not just the ones sent directly to me by Benchmade, but also Benchmade knives that are sent to me by viewers and also Benchmade knives that I can go down to my local shop and handle because they get all the new stuff all the time. I can definitively say Benchmade's quality control now is better than it has ever been and is 100% up to par as far as what we expect in this price point, right? For not only American cutlery, but just cutlery in general, right? Wherever it is. It's, it's great. It's been great for a while. Uh, that's, uh, that's an old, old thing that, that Benchmade doesn't have good quality control. It's not true, right? Now, do anomalies still occur? That's not the right word. Do uh, hiccups still occur? Yeah. It's the same with any company, right? It doesn't matter who it is, right? So you'll still get the occasional person saying, I've got a Benchmade that's a little out of whack. And eh, well, it's, I mean, ev ev any, anybody could have one, a, a knife from any company that's, you know, got something weird. But as far as a general Benchmade knife goes, oh man, no. Quality control now, it's just night and day. And this is a good example of that. Everything here is great. The final cutting bevel is even. The blade is centered, locks out solid. I mean, seriously, I'm not uh, joking around. Everything is great. The, the knife is really, really nice. Now, this has been a, a, a light user at the very least, so I'm not going to count too much off for having a little bit of a stiff point near the top. Like I said, probably just a little bit of nano oil will fix that. Um, the blade, as you could imagine, is extremely thin and extremely slicey. Holy crap. There is a lot of sharp edge here. This is going to make short work of any consistent, you know, just continuous cutting tasks you got to do. If you, if you got to break down thick cardboard boxes, man, this thing will not care. And it comes in my favorite blade steel, still to this day, CPM 154, which I have no problem with whatsoever at this price point. I'll buy knives that cost five times what this knife costs in CPM 154 because I love the blade steel. Stainless, tough, extremely easy to sharpen and holds a reasonable edge. I love the balance of this stuff and I have no problem with it. This is powder formed and it is made by Crucible. I think it's an excellent choice. I also love the tumbled finish on this thing. I think it looks really good. It's a great example of what uh, Benchmade is capable of doing uh, with a tumbled finish. It just looks really, really nice. It is screaming sharp. I cannot emphasize that enough. I think it's actually thinner behind the edge because of the blade height than the bug out. And the bug out is an absolute cutting beast, right? I think it would be really cool if they did uh, a version of this in like M4. Um, or, or something like that where it, it can have even better edge retention um, and, you know, while maintaining really good toughness. Uh, sure, 20 CV M390 because you got to slap that on everything, right? Um, but I think there's a bunch of different blade steels that this would, um, you know, be great in. Obviously, the tip is very delicate. So those of you who go by grandpa's rules and you think that pocket knives are pry bars and screwdrivers, not going to work. It's also not going to work with any knife. Um, my suggestion would be to use a pry bar or a screwdriver because they're better tools for those things. Um, but as far as knife tasks go, since we are looking at a knife today, this will do very well at knife tasks. Um, let's talk about the handle material because the rest of this goes the way that you think it would. It's ambidextrous, right? And we have an ambi clip. So that's awesome. Lefties can enjoy it. There's a lanyard slot thing. 
Uh, it's got Omega Springs, which probably won't fail, but if they do, it's pretty easy to get a replacement, especially considering Benchmade's warranty is one of the best on the market. That is something that you should consider, right? Alongside the fact that this is made in the USA. I hate injection mold plastic scales, and I really hate the stuff like on the bug out and this guy where it is uh, super duper hollowed out for weight reduction, and then we have a cartridge liner. I know that this stuff is durable, and the strength to weight ratio is very, very good. I think, I think that the um, amount that they have reduced the weight is trivial for the vast majority of people who will carry this thing. Um, I'm one of those people who puts a lot of value in things that don't translate to utility, like feeling of solidity, right? Which means nothing. But again, I argue with you, you are not, you're not gaining the benefit of this min-maxing when it comes to like utility and weight. You are not, even if there is a theoretical benefit there for some small groups of people, right? The vast majority of people carrying this thing around are not actually getting that benefit, right? So I would rather pay more money and have a better, honestly, here's the thing. I think they would have knocked this out of the park by putting aluminum on this. Have you guys seen the full immunity? Cool knife. It's really small. And that's fine if you like smaller knives, but my God, those skills were beautiful. I want to see those like coppery bronze contoured diamond textured scales on this bad boy. But uh, oh, there'll be another 0.6 ounces. How could you possibly deal with another 0.6 ounces? 0.6 ounces. That makes it, listen, uh, maybe it'll be more than that. Let's say you put aluminum scales in this guy and, and like God forbid this thing weighs three ounces. Oh my God. How are we ever going to deal with that? The ratios will still be beautiful on this knife. Listen. If this thing weighs three and a half ounces, we have a perfect ounce and inch ratio, an ounce of weight to an inch of blade, right? The balance on this thing is a little bit blade heavy. So adding a little bit of weight to the scales would, would make the balance better. You would increase the feelings of solidity. Aluminum looks and feels better, especially Benchmade's aluminum looks fantastic. It's not just aluminum, right? It depends on how they machine it. On the full immunity, for example, they contour those scales and they diamond texture them. Gorgeous, right? Now, judging by the cost of the full immunity, ah, it's not fair. That's an M4. Let's say they do aluminum scales on this, right? And then they just put the cartridge liners in. A lot of times what they do is they put a full lipped steel liner in behind the aluminum, dramatically increasing the weight. Do the cartridge liner thing if you need to, right? And then just do the same scales, but like the same style of scale, but just in aluminum, right? Or even keep this texturing here, whatever. Because these are also contoured in areas. And then charges two twenty five dollars for it, right? I feel like a lot of people would agree with me that that would just increase the overall look and feel of quality. You're still getting an incredibly lightweight material that is in the vast majority of cases. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, is there any situation where aluminum is going to not be as durable as this stuff? Probably only in the most extreme Batman fantasy scenarios that my comment section can cook up, right? Um, no, I, I, uh, I, I think that it would be way better. Uh, you're still going to benefit from an ultra utilitarian lightweight folding knife. I honestly would prefer it substantially. And I love my bug out in titanium. I couldn't stand it with those injection mold plastic scales. I love mine in titanium. The reason that I brought up that Flytanium has done scales for these and that they are available pre-assembled at Blade HQ is because that's the route I would go. This thing is 180 bucks, which I'm just gonna flat out say no. Uh, this, as it as it sits, uh, listen, Benchmade makes the freaking Griptilian out of, I can only assume the exact same stuff, and it's substantially less money in S30V which is probably a steel that costs maybe slightly more than CPM-154. You're ordering it from Crucible. I don't know. Um, I don't know why this is so expensive. I would say flat out no to that price. But if they made this exact same thing in aluminum and it added some weight to it and they charged a little more money, oh, yes, definitely. It's the same thing I said about the full immunity, right? Now, I can understand not everybody wants the same size knife, but it's like they made the full immunity in really awesome materials but for me, made it a little bit too small. Might still cater to some people. And the price was outrageous. This guy, they got in a good blade steel. 
They made it big and that's great, but they made it in a handle material that I don't really like. And the price is outrageous in my opinion, considering how cheap it feels and how cheap it looks. And I just hate the material, right? I don't care how strong it is. Um, it's just me being a nitpicky reviewer. I don't know about you guys, but if this was priced, if this was exactly the way it was, they had it at 225 and it was aluminum, like that real cool, like kind of dark blue or, you know, the bronzy coppery aluminum. I guess it's like a copper color. Man, sick. That would look awesome. Um, and be an incredibly functional tool. Uh, no, no different. I, I would pay more money for that. Um, so if you're going to pick this up, it is a wonderful tool and it is very comfortable, very accommodating being an ambidextrous knife, um, with ambi clip mounting positions. Fantastic. Right. If you're like, I love plastic. I just think plastic is the best material in the whole world. Right. I know this is injection mold and there's other details to it. If you just love this stuff, then whole boy, howdy, you're going to love this knife, right? 180 bucks. That's nothing. You're going to love this, right? For everybody else, man, Benchmade, I really wish that you would do one of these full size, you know, things like this, but do it in aluminum, like the full immunity. It just obviously Benchmade knows how to machine aluminum. It's gorgeous. They do such a good job with it. I want to see something like this full size. Cool knife, hate the handle material. The price as it is, is too much. But uh, you can get these in titanium, with the flitanium scales, right? It's like 288, which I don't think is bad at all. Or you can get G10 for like 224, which I wish that they would do aluminum, right? I think it would just be a lot better. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. You don't have to agree with me. This is just me, like, it's like knives keep... A lot of I'm rooting for Benchmade, but a lot of the knives just keep missing the mark a little bit. I understand it comes down to preference, right? But I'm just not willing to pay this much money for this injection mold plastic stuff, especially when you know we've got companies like Hogue using G10 and making very similar models for way less money. And there are other knives in Benchmade's line utilizing the same materials for just seemingly no reason less money, right? So yeah. Interesting uh, design, definitely has potential. Don't like it the way that it is. I will link it down below so you guys can check it out either way. Thank you again to the gentleman who gave this knife to me. Um, this will absolutely be a giveaway knife on one of my live streams. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram. I still managed to get a 22 minute video. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.